Aquavar SPD installation and startup video. The following is presented as a supplement to the Aquavar SPD installation, operation, and maintenance manual. Before starting any work, be certain to read, understand, and follow all safety messages and regulations. Make sure electrical power is disconnected and locked out before installing or servicing the drive. Make certain to have all necessary tools and materials on hand before starting. Please refer to the IOM for a complete list of required and recommended items. Inspect the package for damaged or missing items upon delivery. The package should include the SPD controller, a pressure transducer, part number 9K515, and cable and conduit plate caps. Be certain to verify the electric input supply matches the phase and volts on the SPD nameplate. Before starting, determine where the controller and pressure tank will be located. The controller must be mounted vertically with 8 inches of free air space on every side of the unit. The controller is rated NEMA 3R, rain tight, so it may be installed outdoors in a shaded area where the temperature stays within minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit to 122 degrees Fahrenheit and where the maximum humidity is 95% at 104 degrees Fahrenheit, non-condensing. Please refer to the IOM for additional environmental and additional equipment details before starting. A basic Aquavar SPD system should include a pressure relief valve, a diaphragm tank that is 20% of the total system capacity and set 20 PSI below the set point, a 1 quarter inch female NPT threaded fitting for the pressure transducer, discharge pressure gauge, a properly sized pipe that is not smaller than the pump discharge and or suction connections. Rule of thumb, avoid the use of unnecessary fittings to minimize friction loss. Install the pressure transducer with the electrical connector pointing up or horizontal. It should be positioned within 10 feet of the pressure tank in the same straight run of pipe as the tank, away from elbows or turbulence. Rule of thumb, do not install the pressure transducer in a location where freezing can occur. The pressure transducer is rated up to 300 PSI and provides a 4 to 20 milliamp signal back to the drive. The 16-foot cable comes factory pre-wired and should be cut to length in the field for a cleaner installation. Note that a coiled cable can induce unwanted transient voltages and electrical noise in the transducer signal. Maximum recommended transducer cable length is 300 feet. Ideally, the pressure transducer cable should be installed at a location as far away from the input power wiring as possible. Where the transducer cable and power cables must cross, it is recommended to cross perpendicular to the power wiring. If that's not possible and cables must run parallel, be certain there is 11 inches of distance between them. Size and select the appropriate wiring based on the service factor amps of the motor for submersible pumps and full load amps for the motor for non-overloading surface pumps. For guidance on maximum motor wire sizes, see the IOM appendix for details. Run the motor lead from the motor or conduit box through the bottom of the controller. Connect the three-phase motor wiring to terminals T1, T2, and T3. Connect the ground cable to the terminal GND. Rule of thumb, be certain to follow motor manufacturer wiring requirements and do not over tighten the terminals. Size and select the appropriate wiring based upon the input current of the drive. For maximum wire sizes, see the IOM appendix for details. Connect three phase AC input power wiring to terminals L1, L2, and L3. Connect single phase AC input power wiring to terminals L1 and L3. Connect the ground cable to terminal GND. The motor overload setting switches adjust the level of motor overload current protection necessary to protect the motor in case of an overcurrent condition. Bank 1 switches 1, 2, and 3 allow adjustment of this setting. These switches adjust the motor overload protection as a percentage of the full load output current rating of the controller. When setting, choose a setting that meets or is less than the motor's SFA or service factor amp rating. See the IOM for motor overload setting for each model. Switch 4 from Bank 1 and switches 1 and 2 from Bank 2 control the acceleration-deceleration ramp times, affecting how fast the controller will change the speed of the motor. The ramp setting is the time it takes the motor to change from minimum speed to maximum speed. 
A faster ramp setting should be used in systems where the flow rate can change quickly and the motor needs to react faster to maintain the set pressure. A slower ramp setting should be used in systems where the flow rate changes slowly or where fast changes in speed can cause water hammer or pressure surges. Switches 3 and 4 from bank 2 control the no water or dry well restart time, affecting the time between a no water error and the restart of the system. For the 10 minute restart time, the controller will not restart if 5 faults are detected within 60 minutes. All other settings will continue to restart after the chosen restart time. Switch 1 from bank 3 controls the minimum frequency or slowest speed that the motor will run. For submersible pump motor applications, these switches must always be set to 30 Hz. For above ground applications with high suction pressure, the 15 Hz setting can be used to prevent pressure oscillation at low speeds. In some cases, the suction pressure may be high enough that the pump exceeds the pressure setting at 30 Hz. In this case, the 15 Hz setting can be used. Please note, the minimum frequency must be set to 30 Hz for submersible applications. To help avoid audible noise issues with non-filtered drive bottles, switch 2 from bank 3 can be field adjusted to make the carrier frequency be either 2 kHz or 8 kHz. These models do not have an F suffix on their nameplate. Filtered models do have an F suffix and are factory set to 2 kHz and cannot be adjusted. Note that at the 2 kHz setting, the motor will run louder and at a lower temperature, while at 8 kHz the motor will run more quietly and at a higher temperature. The control terminal strips allow for a variety of external input and output function connections. Run Stop is a remote on and off feature that allows the pump and motor to be turned on or off by a float or pressure switch. Hand Auto allows the controller to run the motor at full speed without the use of a pressure transducer or to run the drive and pump at full speed by hand during new well preparation or system startup. Analog output can be connected to external monitoring devices for remote monitoring the running speed of the pump in Hertz or controlling a dosing pump. Relay outputs can be connected to a light or horn to signify pump run and system fault. Pressure drop allows the user to select the amount of pressure drop in the system before the pump starts. Run stop instructions. This input allows the pump and motor to be turned on and off by an external switch. Connect the contacts of a non-powered external switch to terminals 1, COM, and 2, run stop. When the switch is closed, the controller is in run mode and output to the motor is enabled. When the switch is open, the controller is in stop mode and output to the motor is disabled. Note, using the run stop switch is highly recommended for quick disabling of VFD. Hand auto instructions. This input allows the controller to run the motor at full speed without the use of a pressure transducer. This input could be controlled by an external non-powered switch. Connect the contacts of a non-powered external switch to terminals 3, COM, and 4, hand auto. When the switch is closed, the controller is in hand mode. While in hand mode, the run stop input is used to start and stop the motor, and the pressure transducer input is ignored. When the switch is open, the controller is in auto mode. While in auto mode, the controller uses the pressure transducer feedback to control the speed of the motor. Note, using the run stop switch is highly recommended for quick disabling of VFD. Pressure drop instructions. This input allows the user to select the amount of pressure drop in the system before the pump starts. This input can be controlled by an external non-powered switch. Connect the contacts of a non-powered external switch to terminals 5 or 9, COM, and 12, pressure drop. When the switch is closed, the system pressure will drop 20 PSI, when used with a 300 PSI transducer, before restarting the pump. When the switch is open, the system pressure will drop 5 PSI, when used with a 300 PSI transducer, before restarting the pump. SP2, SP1 instructions. This input allows the system to operate at one of two pressure settings. This input can be controlled by an external non-powered switch. Connect the contacts of a non-powered external switch to terminals 5, COM, and 11, SP2, SP1. 
When the switch is closed, pressure set point 2 is enabled, preset to 75 PSI when used with a 300 PSI transducer. When the switch is open, pressure set point 1 is enabled, preset to 50 PSI when used with a 300 PSI transducer. Analog Output Instructions This output is a 4 to 20 milliamp signal based on motor speed. 4 milliamps equals 0 hertz, 20 milliamps equaling 60 hertz and can be connected to external monitoring or external control devices. Connect terminal 10, analog output, to the 4 to 20 milliamp input of the external device. Connect terminal 9, COM, to the negative side of the current loop on the external device. The external device must have an input resistance impedance in the range of 45 ohms to 250 ohms. The maximum output voltage is 24 volts. Relay instructions. Run Relay. This output indicates when the pump and motor is running. This output can be used to control power to a light, an alarm, or other external device. When the pump motor is off, Terminal 13, Relay 1, NO, will be open, and Terminal 14, Relay 1, NC, will be connected to Terminal 15, Relay 1, COM. When the pump motor is on, Terminal 13, Relay 1, NO, will be connected to Terminal 15, Relay 1, COM, and Terminal 14, Relay 1, NC, will be open. The relay rating is 250 volts AC, 5 amps maximum. Fault Relay. This output indicates when the system is faulted. This output can be used to control power to a light, an alarm, or other external device. When the system is not faulted, Terminal 16, Relay 2, NO, will be open and Terminal 17, Relay 2, NC, will be connected to Terminal 18, Relay 2, COM. When the system is faulted, Terminal 16, Relay 2, NO, will be connected to Terminal 18, Relay 2, COM, and Terminal 17, Relay 2, NC, will be open. The relay rating is 250 volts AC, 5 amps maximum. Before starting up, check that all electrical connections are correct and tight. At startup, the pump will run to satisfy the factory preset system pressure of 50 PSI for set point 1. Once it has, you can push and hold INC or DEC until the desired set point pressure is achieved. Replace the drive cover, being careful to make sure the top cover fits into the proper aligning groove. If the cover is not aligned properly, it may hang from the control board and create a short circuit, permanently damaging the drive. Rule of thumb, if the pressure or flow seems low, or if the system is indicating motor overload error, check the motor rotation direction. Refer to the IOM for details. Aquavar SPD drives are self-diagnosing controllers. If a problem occurs, observe the status code indicator light color and action, and refer to the status code label on the side of the controller access cover to diagnose system errors. Please note, if no status code indicator light is visible, it means there is either no input voltage or low input voltage that is less than 140 volts AC. Please refer to the fault code restart action table in the IOM for more detail. For additional instructions on troubleshooting the Alcovar SPD, please refer to the IOM for details. For technical selection and sizing documents, please refer to the URL shown on the screen. For customer service, call 1-800-453-6777. And for technical support, call 866-673-0445.